Good morning from the kitchen folks. It's another experimental day in home brewing. So today I'm going to have a go at making a fruity and spicy mead. So a mead is a honey uh, based wine and I'm going to add to it some strawberries, some red grapes and two red chillies for that warmth. So I'm kind of thinking that, you know, it's like winter, it's cold, the honey's going to be nice and the spiciness with the honey, the spiciness with the sweetness, I think is going to kind of give it a bit of a kick, but hopefully in a good way. I'm just going to begin by adding my fruit into the blender. So I've just got to trim the tops off the strawberries. And then the same with my chilies, but I'm going to leave the seeds in them for a bit more fire. So I'll just give them a quick rinse under the tap. I love the vibrant red colours. So in these go too. Now I'm going to top it up with spring water. I'm using spring water because the tap water in Leeds is a bit chlorine and it's made some of my wines go a bit mm, in the past. And now the noisy bit. So I've basically now got a lovely healthy smoothie, but it won't be staying a healthy smoothie, oh no. Okay, so this is now done for the time being. I'm just going to leave this in my utility room where it's a bit cooler for a few hours because I want all those flavours to sort of really percolate through into the water. So I'll come back to you in a few hours time. Okay, it's been about eight hours since I blended the fruit in the uh, blender and I'm now going to uh, separate the liquid from the matter. I'll leave a little bit of matter in there, but I'm going to take some out because I don't want too much sediment. But just look how it's separated like that. So here's a look from on top. Looks very artistic and it actually smells really fresh. You can smell the chilli. I think looking at that weather out there, a winter warming made with chilli in uh, will be quite welcome. OK, here goes nothing. So I want a little bit of the solid matter to come through, just not all of it, otherwise I'm going to end up with too much sediment. Let's bring the wooden spoon in now, just encourage a bit through. And nothing is wasted, as what's left in the sieve is going into this wok. And I'm going to be making some sweet and sour sauce with that in it. So I'm just tipping the rest in now. And I'm just playing the waiting game now for it to all filter through. So there's the liquid that's come from the fruit. And now the next step, when you're making mead, you need some honey. So this is going to be a case of pour and wait. Next, I'm adding about 200 grams of sugar. And then to that, I'm adding spring water. Okay, I'm topped up. Gas on, heat on, and I want to melt this sugar and I want the water to be hot before I add it into the demijohn. So the water's getting hot, the sugar's just about melted, and don't worry about that floating on the water, it's just a bit of fruit debris off the spoon as I add it in the sieve. Okay, I want to turn the first lot off. This is hot, it's not boiling, but it's hot. I want to pour that in. Very syrupy. And be 
because that's so hot, that will actually melt the honey that's already in there. Okay, just give that a bit of an agitation. Get it shaking round. Excuse the bottle tops, that's for a, a tabletop project. You can see that the honey, which was in a layer at the bottom, has largely melted. And that's looking okay. Okay, I've got this Lalvin Champagne Sparkling Wine and Cider Yeast. I'm going to use that. Now there's a lot of sugar in here with the honey, sugar and with the fruit. This is going to activate fast. In fact, you can see it's activating almost straight away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on a time lapse so you can see how fast this does activate. And in the meantime, I'm going to make a sweet and sour pork. Well, I think it's safe to say that that has been a massive success so far. So let's hope it tastes as good. And the same for my sweet and sour pork, which is just bubbling away nicely now. So I've got my label on. It's bubbling away nicely. As is dinner. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it away for a week before topping it up with a little bit more sugar and water. Um, after that, I'll let it ferment for two more weeks. I'll separate the sediment out, leave it for another week, and then I'll be bottling it. So, I'll catch you in a little while, okay? See you later. Good morning from the kitchen, folks. As you can see, I've got three different brews on the go, and I'm just going to top them up a little bit today with some more spring water and sugar, just to get the maximum amount of wine out I can from the Demijohns. So this is the strawberry chilli and red grape mead. And it's looking really, really good. Look how clear it is already. And it's still in the fermentation uh, stage. So I think this is going to be a nice, clear, and hopefully very tasty sparkling wine. So I've just got some spring water in a saucepan. And I'm going to add about 200 grams of white sugar. There we go, that's enough. And I just want that to dissolve now in the water. Okay, so you can see that the water has warmed and the sugar has dissolved. It's now uh, a nice syrupy solution. I'm going to turn the heat off because I don't want it to get too hot because that won't do the yeast any good. So when it goes into the mead. And hopefully the yeast is going to be getting very excited now at that extra bit of sugar in there. So I'll pop the airlock back in. And there we go, lovely fermentation. Pop, pop, pop. I'll just leave that to dry for a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to leave these now and make sure that there's no eruptions before putting them back for a little bit more fermentation. So there's been no disastrous floods and I've got them all back in the living room now. So I shall be coming back to them in a week or two's time. So just a one month update with my strawberry chilli and red grape mead. It's virtually stopped uh, bubbling now through the airlock. I'm getting one bubble every 40 to 50 seconds. So I've now brought it outside. It's two degrees in the garden and I want to let it cold crash out here and hopefully that'll stop the fermentation altogether. You can see how lovely and clear it is and that's without finings so I shan't bother putting any finings in this one. Straight to bottle. Hey folks from the kitchen it's bottling day for the strawberry chilli and red grape mead and there she is this has not been cleared, this has settled itself naturally and for me that's clear enough. It's been out in the garden for two days, it's been one or two degrees only, nicely cold crashed, no fermentation taking place. I don't feel the need to add finings 
I'm just going to transfer straight to bottle. In each of my 750ml bottles goes three of these carbonation drops. And these are basically specialist sugar cubes for fermenting. These will cause a secondary fermentation to take place in the bottle, which is what will give the mead the sparkle. So then it's bung out. Siphoning tube in, and as usual, the fun bit. So I need to keep the end of the siphoning tube above the level of the sediment. I'm very hopeful of five bottles today, and maybe even a little bit more. The bubbles in the pipe signify the end of the siphoning. I've got my plastic bums which have been softening in hot water. That makes them easier to push into the bottles. They're really hard actually and if you don't soften them in hot water it's a bit of a mission. They should go in reasonably easy now. One. Two. Three, four, and finally five. I've got my five bottles on the sink. I now need to add cages, which are not there for vanity reasons. They are there to prevent explosive lid releases, which does happen. One, two, Three, four, and finally number five. Hey from the kitchen folks, it's been 16 days since I bottled the strawberry chilli and red grape mead. I'm quite excited to see how this has turned out, so now it's time to sample it. So I'm just undoing the cage. Hmm, the littlest of pops. Let's see if I get any sparkle. I would say not. However, proof will be in the tasting. You get the mildest, mildest of fizz on your tongue. It's not sparkling, but there's definitely some mild effervescence. The overarching flavour that comes through is the chilli seed, weirdly. The strawberryness hits you on the smell. The honey and the red grape, not at all. It tastes like a dry white wine with a bit of chilli in it. That's literally what's coming across. It's not unpleasant and I can certainly drink it. This is interesting. It's certainly not one I would rush to make again, but I can definitely drink it. So cheers. I'm going to give this one a hmm verdict. It's not awful. It's not fantastic. It's just okay. It's drinkable. Better luck next time. Cheers, folks. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. 
If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.